Yo, 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 yo. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, so. Good evening, good night. Hello, everyone. Hello, people. Hello, humans. Hello, everyone. Here is Ukraine TV with you this night, this day, and all the future and all the past. Here with us we have Noir, Yanisia, Faina, me, Globalization, and also our first special guest, Katya. Katya, welcome. Here she is, this beautiful creature of this world. Katya, tell us please, who are you, what are you doing? What is going on nowadays in this world? Hi everyone, my name is Katya. Uh, I'm from West Ukraine. Uh, now I'm living in Poland for the last eight years. I'm a co-owner of uh, bar Sekta Selecta uh, in Kazimierz. It's in Krakow. So yeah, it's a special place for special people. Uh, it's a place about um, art, about communication, about people, about music, about culture. So yes, you can go there and have a great time uh, with great people. So yeah. Uh, what special last time uh, happened? Like uh, any kind of special parties? Uh, so yeah, uh, sometimes we are making some special events and uh, last week we had a charity event uh, for, helping, for helping and support Ukraine and we collect some money, like a 3000 zlotych and uh, we want to uh, give uh, 1100 to Foundation Nasza Nova Nadzieja, which means our new hope. Uh, for support women in army and uh, yes, yeah, so I give them underwear like a special one, very comfortable. I think it's really important because they fight for uh, Ukraine, for Europe to be honest and uh, I think it's really important. Okay, thank you Katja. So your uh, last uh, words, uh, maybe wishes? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, fuck Putin. Fuck Russia and Slava Ukraini. Do you wanna say Slava? Hero and Slava, yeah! her brand uh, which call uh, Pokora Custom and she's doing really great things she's my favorite one yes yeah, so I recommend everyone to find her in Instagram and uh, check her arts because she's a special girl <laughs> okay thank you very much uh, Katja Glocal 
mommy boss <laughs> and soon you will meet the rest of our crazy all over the world team yo hello guys i'm rom I'm here, hello Rocarno. Uh, thanks Glad, thanks Katya, thanks guys for this uh, introduction and for you are here, thank you Locarno that you are there, that you are here also. We mix times, we mix uh, spaces, uh, we mix signals, the stream art is a combination of people, living people, signals, machines and that's a kind of a combination, kind of a, a trailer of our uh, daily activity we want to present to you uh, now and uh, we will try later to connect one more time uh, our host we say hello to our host but now uh, we propose a change of energy and a bit of theory about uh, presence and present because the future of attention is of course important thing but the present and presence here in the hot spot between uh, war between east and uh, west uh, between people from uh, different routes uh, in uh, Krakow in our crazy uh, city uh, which is changing day after day is a very important thing how to find each other and uh, how to find find uh, ourselves in this uh, mix and the context of war and also the context of uh, post-pandemic and uh, new period maybe without future or maybe with a future which is uh, something uh, strange and uh, Crazy. Arek Putorak, uh, theorist and uh, curator from Krakow, who is friend of uh, Ukraina TV. Uh, now, a uh, few minutes and the introduction uh, with uh, theoretical energy. Welcome. There is a widespread assumption that nowadays the experience of the present as something palpable, as a time filled with content, if you will, that it remains something very elusive, that we can barely inhabit the here and now, haunted by ghosts of the past, driven by nostalgia or the other way around, driven by ambition and projections for the future times. In countries like Poland, this kind of sentiment might feel particularly valid. The here and the now is rather inconvenient, half modernized, half baked, halfway between an idealized past and some glorified futures for each one's own past and one's own future. As we are in between West and East and traveling in time and traveling in space, we are going to Kiev, uh, where we will uh, meet uh, 
Aleksandra Kalepa, Head of uh, Carbon Community, Carbon Media Lab, which is also a friend of Ukraine TV. And we used to collaborate and we will collaborate in uh, next season too. Thank you for for um, having me here. Um, so, what is it, an attention uh, for us after uh, the working? So, this uh, could be also uh, in um, parallel with uh, alarm. So, right now, uh, people um, are. Um, uh, really aware about alarm, but previously when war just started, we were really afraid of alarm, and right now we are get used to it, and uh, it uh, doesn't uh, make uh, more, I would say, attention to us right now during six months, uh, because we are all already got used to this uh, alarm and uh, to this attention. So also it's also a question about in Europe how uh, attention to Ukraine could uh, give us a, a, um, a resistance. Uh, because, for example, for uh, for the very first days and uh, few weeks and few months, uh, uh, we were really in in uh, highlights of uh, news, uh, and um, it was really um, um, it was really I would say um, focused. Uh, all world was was focused on our problem. And uh, that's why uh, we are having right now uh, the very big support from uh, um, a lot of countries. And right now, uh, when after uh, six months, we have less intention uh, to our problem. And um, it's also both of these uh, things, like alarm, like for our people, for the all of uh, Ukraine alarm and also um, like um, focus on the uh, war in Ukraine uh, uh, people already getting tired of this topic and we understand that this attention is uh, getting I would say in the uh, different uh, slice of our attention. It's also because of the human psychology, of course, because the human cannot be focused all the time on uh, something one. And of course, it's uh, also an issue and it's also, a, I would say, remedy not to be uh, really stressed stressed a lot Oh fuck all it is Hello guys don't be stressed, we're not. We try to be not stressed. If you want to support uh, Ukraine TV, here is the moment, uh, maybe good to show something, uh, kind of the advertisement. And uh, we're staying in Kiev. Uh, for a moment, we're staying in Kiev uh, because we have a special short um, kind of uh, trailer for an interview with uh, Tucha, young heroine, one more star, superstar from uh, Ukraine, who uh, is 
One More Friend of Ukraine TV and uh, the interview is done by uh, also another friend of us, uh, Anita Nemet. She's an art curator uh, from Lviv, but now uh, she's in residence in uh, Portugal. And that's two girls who are good friends from Khmelnytsky city in Ukraine, now uh, far away from each other, but still in uh, contact. Uh, and uh, we have like a flash of this uh, conversation which uh, takes more than half an hour and we will invite you for our next season which will start on September in our uh, social media in chat uh, there is uh, some links some information about uh, what uh, will happen what happened here and after this Con short conversation. We have video clip by Tucha, and after the video clip, we are back in our live uh, show and uh, with a main topic of uh, our meeting with uh, you guys. Uh, we, will we will talk about women in uh, Ukrainian army and also about particular real support uh, uh, people do here in front of us. Uh, we'll tell a bit about uh, daily activities and uh, then we will have like a moment uh, for conversation also with you guys, uh, with Miłosz. Uh, I hope so. It will work uh, with uh, Zoom combined with uh, Twitch stream. Uh, we will check it. Uh, if not, uh, still you can um, put questions in uh, chat in our Twitch or in uh, uh, Locarno Festival in your main uh, uh, Twitch uh, page where the all 24 hour event uh, takes place and uh, we are very happy to be part of uh, this guy. So I'm looking in the Yeah, in my setup, I'm disappearing, and uh, Anita and Tucha are here. How are you? How are you doing now? And uh, what you were doing before 24th of February? Mm -hmm. and how your life changed now, what are you doing now, and what you were doing all of this, like, already six months, it's like half of a year. Mm -hmm. I was musician, and I'm still musician, but of course, uh, war changed everything in our lives, in our minds. Uh, you never prepare for war. You, like, understand that it can be, but when it becomes, it's like, uh, oh my god, what I I don't know. And yeah, after a few weeks, I started volunteering and um, started the music. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do and I need to do it here. We can fight on all the fronts, like yeah, you we just can, did it you, before. Yeah, you just can, you just should do whatever you can do in your life because uh, because if you started to some, uh, have some philosophy thought or something uh, thinking about a sense of life, it's like bullshit because it's like one day in your life now, one war is like close and then you understand this one day and then it just maybe it's something aggressive but you want to uh, to do something and maybe to leave uh, your name like in the page of history, uh, even though mm -hmm. okay. It's it, it, like I want. I want it. It's really. <laughs> I want it <laughs> to, to leave my name. So yeah. So this word uh, showed me that uh, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough power. We just can't do uh, best what we can do in this time in this place.
one. The setup is rather unsettling. Great exercise in being non sovereign. One could say this is a very non sovereign state to exist in the somewhere else, sometime soon, or once upon a time. There is an intimacy, though, about reveries of the bygone and the coming times. A sense of ownership, if you want. Every dream has no value other than that you bestow on it yourself. Viewed in this light, the present is the non-sovereign time. The time of constant disturbance, the unwanted phone calls, the strangers demanding your attention, your money, your time. How to think non-sovereignty of the present as a state one could flourish in. Not a return to Eden, not one's proud moment of glory, not even one's own time, not even one's own, 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 not even one's own. Hi guys, uh, hi tonight. Uh, uh, this is Alona, as uh, you found uh, uh, founder of uh, New Hope uh, Foundations. Hi. Hi. Um, hello, hello. Uh, uh, tell me, tell me about uh, for you foundation. Uh, we start uh, working um, after. Uh, when in Ukraine start a war and uh, many people come to uh, Krakow and uh, we organize some uh, school for children actually from March uh, we working um, from till uh, and uh, our children have uh, lessons uh, English, Polish and uh, physical activity um, and actually uh, they have um, psychologists because uh, uh, children uh, very um, how to say that I don't know even how to say that actually um, Okay, uh, so uh, after after war, uh, you know, uh, people um, have something with mind, you know, uh, and uh, we uh, start to working with this. Okay. Oh, uh, why uh, why underwear? Why is this? Uh, um, we have a couple part of uh, work in our foundation. Uh, actually, school it's. Uh, one of these and uh, um, we uh, start to uh, do underwear because our friends from Ukraine uh, in doctors in hospital say uh, we don't have underwear from injured uh, people and we think about this and we create uh, something like this if we can I can <laughs> I can show you how to uh, how how it's working. Okay, help you. <laughs> and now transformation underwear. Very interesting uh, because uh, very more uh, army, Ukrainian army, uh, you need uh, help uh, because uh, 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 
if somebody don't have uh, don't have legs or hands, uh, they can uh, do like um, it's usually uh, underwear. So uh, we create something like this. Actually, we have no uh, not only this. Uh, we have this, and I show you how it's working. <laughs> Ukrainian army uh, is no uh, only boys, uh, uh, so uh, these girls, very more girls are Ukrainian army and uh, uh, help uh, Ukrainian. Uh... Uh, actually, we help uh, and uh, Ukrainian uh, girls in army too because we have uh, one problem girls one have one problem uh, all armors uh, uh, it's for men it's usually but not in this time uh, shoes uh, and suits for women it's re really really how to say that uh, you can't find in a normally uh, situations is uh, in uh, war it's more um, more not simple <laughs> how to say that uh, it's uh, so we start uh, to do uh, to um, uh, create something for girls and uh, bought shoes uh, bought, uh, bought uh, suits and uh, something like this because uh, girls uh, smaller like men and uh, all the time it's problem okay thank you so much thank you so thank you for support uh, thank you for your helping and uh, thank you uh, all, all people in this world who support us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So let's go now.
Siema, Elo. Gdzie mam patrzeć? Mam patrzeć na kamerę. Czy mam patrzeć na kamerę? Albo trzeci mikrofon. Hello guys. Uh, one more time I'm from carpet now and the uh, one more special guest for the local local heroine uh, from Krakow. Actually and uh, there was a bit different idea at the beginning like still today but the friend of us so uh, uh, finally didn't came because uh, of COVID uh, uh, accidentally today. Uh, a friend of uh, Maria, we say hello, greetings to Maria. And um, I had the imagination that it will be kind of a dialogue, dialogue uh, kind of a confession a bit maybe, next time. but uh, maybe next time, <laughs> I hope so about how is it to be a Belarusian girl in Krakow in uh, between. Hmm. In between this uh, conflict uh, between the power relation that we are really just the pixels in this geopolitical game and we try our best to be not only pixels in this uh, and to do something uh, like from our uh, position grassroots. How is it for you to be here in Krakow to in one way support uh, people from Ukraine on the other hand to be still like a bit... Uh, on the um, other side. I don't know. Well, maybe, no, maybe, uh, maybe alien in Poland because yeah. this is also yeah, part of is. Uh, our yeah, um, integration um, statement that uh, I would like to uh, give to you guys and to people around that uh, Ukrainian TV is also to uh, support us to live together here. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Ksenia and I'm from Belarus. Uh, I live in Krakow about five years now and uh, to be honest I ran away from Belarus when I was barely 18 and I never thought in my life that I would do the things I do now. I was not even speaking uh, Russian because Belarusians speak Russian. Five years I was not speaking Russian at all but since the war started, I even started to speak Ukrainian. It's a beautiful language, by the way. Um, it was absolutely weird for me. Everything which happened was absolutely shocking. I was home, I was in Belarus back in the day. And uh, I really wanted my friend to be here because my story is directly connected to her. I never was thinking about to be volunteer, to work with children, soldiers, to do what I do. I did a bunch of stuff since war happened, uh, since war started. Um, so back in the day I was at home and uh, I was following Maria on Instagram for a long time. Oh my god. I was following Maria um, for a long time since actually protests in Belarus happened in 2020. Uh, it was absolutely um, icon. For, she was absolutely icon for me. She's still, honestly, it's an amazing person, the greatest from like all I've met. Um, when I've seen her doing, started to do like full, full, whole, huge fundraising in Krakow, I was like, I need to be there. I need to help her. I just packed my things and one day I came back to Poland and started to help her, started to do a bunch of other things to help Ukrainians because I just thought back in the day that I just need to do it. It's just like it's my destiny, it is my way to go now and now it will be my everyday job just to help people because I know how it feels to suffer from things you don't have impact on. 
because I remember the worst thing I experienced in my life back in the day in 2020 it was two days when I was not able to contact my family for two days because Belarus would cut it off from internet at all I didn't knew for two days if my family and friends are alive even it was like the hardest experience in my life and now since I've met all these people who suffered from war I just understood that I am able to help them, at least somehow in Krakow, because I know the city, I know the language, I know the people. That's why I started to do this. But um, it is hard to be a Belarusian now in Poland. Everything changed. I don't really understand why. Well, technically, technically I do. But of course, for me, it's unbelievably hard to believe that some people can blame me just because I was born in that country, though I honestly don't know any Belarusian who support our government, but I know all the people who don't. And at the same time, I've met a bunch of hate from other people just because I am who I am. And even, um, I have a good example, I tell this example to everyone, the first day I've got into our uh, like fundraising thing, we were uh, delivering the humanitarian help to people, and I was going with a man in the, in his car, and we were driving through Krakow, and we went into traffic, and we you know like had a communication, just dialogue, and he was like, "Why do you speak Russian? Like use Ukrainian?" And I started to speak Ukrainian to him, and I exa uh, I told him like. I'm Belarusian, I don't need to speak Ukrainian, but I do speak Ukrainian, but sorry, I mean, I feel more comfortable in like Russian language, and he was like, oh, you're Belarusian, so you, you know, it's your person. I was like, man, I'm fucking, sorry, I'm, I'm delivering like humanitarian help with you. That's what I do. My friend did the whole fundraising thing, you are like into, in, in it right now. He was like, yeah, 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 but but you like I'm blaming you anyway, just because you're Belarusian. I was like, oh my god, really? Are you like are you serious? And on unfortunately, he was serious, and many other people are still serious about it. It sounds like absurd maybe for people outside, but it is uh, that it's not uh, that people blame you because you are who you are, but uh, because of my what, yeah, yeah, what you uh, you you has a new passport and yeah. it's uh, absolutely strange, but it's uh, it's real. It's the situation that we are in the middle of. There is also about. Uh, Polish and Ukrainian relation. Uh, still, uh, there is uh, big support. There is big integration in one way, but also there are more and more uh, uh, situation full of hate. And we'll talk about this. And we need to learn and teach each other uh, how to live together in this uh, new context. Uh, in this hot spot and uh, this is what uh, Ukraina TV uh, is and is uh, great for uh, I would like uh, yeah to say thank you uh, for this uh, story and uh, yeah uh, we have moment now I don't know what is time I don't know what's happened in uh, Locarno, uh, but this is the moment uh, when we can ask uh, our DJ residents to be prepared maybe to uh, start something uh, uh, like a new chapter. Uh, can yeah, I just add something? Yeah. A little small thing. Uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, I will also ask um, Miłosz, our host, maybe. Uh, is it? <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> And uh, maybe there, and also Ola, our advertisement, PR, and social media manager expert, uh, uh, is something in the chat, in our chat, or in chat of uh, Locarno Twitch. Uh, maybe there are some questions to ask, uh, we'll try to answer 
Okay, so there are questions. So uh, I will try to move around. Uh, microphone. Of course, of course. Okay, yeah. I just yeah. wanted to add mm -hmm. one thing, one very important thing to everyone who's listening now, who's watching this. Um, before I saw that to help people to be a volunteer, it's very hard because you never know how to start it. But it's so easy, guys, to help other people. You just need to do what you know how to do, and just you just literally need to go outside and just need anyone if anyone needs help. That's it. And I wish you to try this because it feels amazing. It feels absolutely like a God blessing when you help someone, and someone is truly, truly grateful for this. And yeah, peace for Russia. Do I need to like stay here or do I need to continue? No. Bye everyone. Uh, I would like to talk about the presence of attention. It's uh, something uh, that I am thinking about right now because uh, right now people in Ukraine uh, are always aware about what is happening right now. So their attention are always on the topic of war. They are always uh, uh, um, uh, want to uh, put money into the, our defense. They always uh, like keep in mind that uh, on news. Uh, they are always keep in mind on uh, the topic how to help. And there is also an issue in our society that we have a, a lot of anger. The final scene, and this is the last superstar. Tell your story shortly. <laughs> oh, shortly. Okay, I I will try it to do that. So, uh, hi everyone. My name is Artem. I'm 19, and I'm a model and the stylist. I worked as a model and the stylist in Ukraine, but because of war, I have lost my job the sense of life, my stability and the peace of my mind. I was forced to leave my home. Russia destroyed our lives. Now in Poland I am work in the supermarket and I am not ashamed of this and I am not complaining about it. I am uh, happy that uh, at least I have this job and have the opportunity to earn money and help my family. A few weeks ago I made a TikTok video that went viral. In this video I said that in Ukraine I had a job of my dream and in Poland I work uh, as a cashier. I didn't complain or say anything bad about Poland and Poles. It was just a video about my life. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, life can change at any second and we should uh, appreciate uh, that we have and be ready for any difficulties and I'm really 
and I'm ready because I'm Ukrainian. I was headed because of this video a lot. A huge number of Poles uh, expressed their uh, dissatisfaction in my uh, direction. They wrote something like he works and also complains if you don't like something you can return to Ukraine in a very rude way. Be glad that you're still alive, you're taking job from the Poles and life on our money. But how can I live on their money if my family haven't received any financial assistance yet? Also, there were a lot of stupid jokes about the war, Ukrainian people, etc. Thousands of some of such comments. I was really disappointed reading this. I tried to explain my situation to people, but no one wanted to understand me. Uh, no one of them woke up uh, woke up at 4 a.m. from both from bombs uh, explosions. No one of them heard the terrible sounds of sirens. No one of them slept in basements like all Ukrainians did. And I'm not the Talking about other terrible situations that people from Bucha, Erpin, Kherson, Kharkov, Mariupol, etc. have experienced. I don't want anyone to experience this, but joking about these topics disgusting. I'm extremely grateful to all Poles and other countries for helping us. We should respect this and help affected people without um, compensations. I could tell you more, but for today I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, man. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm sorry for Poland. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, but I think uh, I this is also right important. Now. This is also important that this poczucie winy, this feeling uh, that Belarusian. Keeping uh, hearts and Poles keeping hearts is something that I think we have to also deal with. Uh, overthink, it's maybe too much sorry to each other. And I feel you, I see your answer on this hate. How you play with this, how you able to do some kind of the language performance with this. Uh, I I would say it's respect, really, man. It's Thank a massive you. experience. But I love Poland. I love Polish people. So okay, that's 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 okay. I love this energy, which uh, Tucha said the same. Uh, that the war it's a paradox. That the war gives a kind of the crazy energy to us and the mix. Uh, like feeling uh, which is maybe nihilistic in a way that maybe there is no future or nobody knows what future means now for us for younger generation and so on and here in this hot spot between west and east i think we feel it uh, so much so much so strongly it's something like a area that we can uh, learn and maybe teach other people about the future as uh, something really unstable. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Cool. Maybe you want to say yeah. something? <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. I am from Ukraine. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this uh, your place, place uh, Poland. Uh, we work uh, for us. Thank you. Thank you, Locarno, for uh, new energy. Uh, we are actually after this night, after this preparation of this night, we have uh, stuff for next few uh, events, for next few uh, F year in next season. So in September, the beginning of September, we will start regular uh, streamings. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>